Today, we're all about achieving flight so we can turn our vision of a giant cube in the sky into a reality. The cube will be our new AE2 controller setup and will solve our issue of running out of space in the pattern access terminal. To make this happen, I looked for the Iron Jetpacks mod, but it broke when I updated the mod pack. So I went for an alternative, a jetpack from Mechanism. All it needs is some crafting and hydrogen. To get the hydrogen, I set up an electrolytic separator and used it to separate water into hydrogen and oxygen and crafted chemical tanks to store these gases. Place them next to the separator and with energy provided to the separator, we were in business with our jetpack. Wow. Before building the sky cube, I set up a mechanism smelting factory powered by energy for faster work. I swapped out the old setup, set up energy pipes, and configured the new smelter with max energy and speed upgrades. It is much faster and probably more efficient as you can see. Back to our main goal, I ordered a bunch of ME controllers and started building the giant cube in the sky. The jetpack helped me move around and build it from all angles. Once it was done, I ordered cables and started branching out from the cube. With some space left in our crafting flower, I squeezed in the P2P recipe, molecular assemblers, and acceleration upgrades. I requested 8 molecular assemblers, 16 P2P tunnels, a bunch of acceleration cards, and 48 pattern providers. Continuing with the build, I branched out the cables and created the frame for the crafting flowers. Making sure to add the acceleration upgrades, I covered them with pattern providers, just like our initial one. Then I added cables going towards them. A P2P tunnel and finally connected them with a cable. I mirrored the same build on the other side but I goofed up a little by forgetting that one cable. Let's just say it looks cool like that. I also used a quartz knife to make some cable anchors which are super useful for separating the cables. After some cable anchor trial and error, I came up with a sleek design. For those unfamiliar with P2P tunnels, they basically take the channels from one side of a controller and send them to the other side they're connected to. So I dismantled the old crafting flower as it used up too many channels. Then I replaced the old controller with an energy acceptor and hooked it up to the new one. All that's left is to get myself a memory card which is the tool that connects the P2P tunnels. Then I connected them by shift right clicking on the end facing the controller. Then right clicking on the other end that needed channels. To test it, I placed one pattern per flower and check the access terminal. As you can see, we've got 8 times more space than before and all 8 patterns are visible, confirming that it's working. So after some organizing, here's what the new access terminal looks like for our patterns. That's gonna be a wrap for this episode gamers. Be sure to check out the next one if you want to see how I set up the auto crafting for mechanism and maybe even some wireless power.